हेलो फ्रेंड्स व्हाट्स एप सो लेट एस कंटिन्यू इंटरनेशनल इकोनॉमिक पॉलिसी दिस इज़ द फोर्थ वीडियो ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर लेसन एंड इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी अबाउट द डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ ट्रेड अग्रीमेंट्स ओके दैट टू और मोर कंट्रीज डू विद ईच अदर इन ऑर्डर टू प्रमोट ट्रेड बिटवीन देम एंड यू नो इट इज़ ऑल्सो नोन एज इकोनॉमिक इंटीग्रेशन बिकॉज Uh, you know, it's not exactly economic integration. Economic integration is a broader term, but you know, trade agreement is a part of economic integration. So we are trying to align our policies with other countries, so that you know there is a free and you know, uh, you know, uh, without any barriers, the trade can happen between two countries. So that is what we are going to see here. What are the different kinds of trade agreements? so uh, let us first start by understanding uh, you know what trade agreements do so trade agreements essentially uh, you know abolish the tariff and non tariff barriers on trade okay so it can be complete abolition or partial abolition for example if uh, india was trading with say usa okay there was uh, imports there was exports also now there were some barriers on this trade for example on imports there were import duties like custom duties etc okay then there were some non tariff barriers also like quotas so if the india is signing some trade agreement with usa then it will reduce the import duties on the products from usa or it will or it will uh, you know abolish the quotas or it will increase the quotas something like that so basically it is either the complete or partial abolition of tariffs and non tariff barriers so as to make the trade free okay free trade free trade meaning not uh, free in the sense of money but free trade meaning without much hassles and without the hurdles trade can happen that is known as free trade it might include unification of economic policies so uh, you know trade agreements can also include unification of economic policies like for example movement of free movement of labor and capital monetary policies fiscal policies etc so when we include this unification of policies also it results into integration okay economic integration so we'll look into it how it happens and what are the different levels of economic integration it is known as the degrees of economic integration okay so the first is preferential trading area okay pta it is also known as preferential trading agreement so that is pta then the second one is free trade agreement free trade area then customs union common market or it is also known as single market okay i'll explain to you each one of this what is the meaning of all these terms then economic unions economic and monetary union and complete economic integration so these are the seven degrees of integration with the increasing degree of integration okay so the you know the degree of integration is more in free trade area than in pta okay then it is further increased in custom union then even more in uh, common market then from that more in economic union so like this the degree of integration is increasing as we increase the degree of integration the level of integration is increasing now let us look at the first one preferential trade area or preferential trade agreement what does it entail what is the meaning of this so preferential meaning see the word of preferential uh, means that you give preference to something okay so it does not mean does not mean 100% free okay so you are just giving preference to somebody but you are not making 100% free for that person okay so it means reducing tariff but not abolish them completely okay so when you are giving preference to somebody it means you are reducing tariff for them but you are not completely abolishing them for example if india is trading with say four countries us china singapore and australia and if the and if the us is and if the india is having the preferential trade agreement with us only so what it will do it will reduce the tariffs for usa okay and for uh, so tariff for usa will be less than the tariff for other countries if india has the pta with only usa okay so it means the reducing the tariff but not completely eliminating the tariffs okay not completely eliminating the tariffs and it is not necessarily for all products okay so whenever there is a preferential trade agreement it does not mean that the country will two countries will sign it for all the products you know so the trade is completely free 
then it is also not necessary that you know it is same for all participating countries so a pta can be either bilateral that means it can be between two countries or it can be multilateral also for example if there is a multilateral preferential trade agreement for example say there is a preferential trade agreement uh, amongst the sark nations okay i'm just giving you a hypothetical example so sark nations meaning the south asian countries so in the south asian countries then there there are countries like india bangladesh nepal right afghanistan is also a part of that so in south asian uh, countries uh, if there is a pta between south asian countries it means that you know india and all these countries will have a pta signed with each other so you know it it is not necessary that uh, you know the pta will exactly be the same with all the countries that is participating in that pta it can be different so for example india can have a different pta with bangladesh the terms can be different with nepal it can be different with pakistan it can be different with afghanistan it can be different so like that so it is not necessary that the participating countries all the participating countries in the pta agreement will have the same terms and will have the same level of uh, you know freeness in the trade then the next degree of integration that we have to discuss is the free trade agreement okay fta this is the most important one so free trade area free trade agreement is the most commonly used uh, you know trade agreements between countries and you know between a group of countries also so for example the asean countries association of southeast asian countries these are the 10 countries which are in southeast asia and they have a asean free trade agreement with each other okay asean fta so uh, so free trade agreement is the most common kind of uh, you know trade agreement that uh, you know countries sign with each other so in as a name itself suggests the free trade agreement means that there is a complete elimination of tariffs for trade in goods okay and reducing or elimination eliminating the non tariff barriers for goods services etc so uh, free trade area means you have to just keep in mind that there is a complete elimination of taxes custom duties tariffs for trade in goods only okay so for goods it is complete elimination and for non tariff barriers it is reducing or eliminating them okay it can be completely removing or it can be reducing also and it uh, and now non tariff barriers for goods and services so that is the meaning of free trade area so you can see that the degree of integration has increased here here it was just reducing the tariffs here it is completely eliminating the tariff for trade in goods then the next degree of integration is known as customs unions okay so in custom union all the condition of free trade agreement is there okay so it is elimination of tariff barriers for goods and uh, reducing or eliminating the non tariff barriers for trade in goods and services along with this there is also a common tariff rules for non participating countries also okay so for example if the asean countries they have a free trade agreement okay asean countries have a fta so now they have a fta means this 10 countries can have free trade in uh, goods uh, without any tariff within themselves among themselves these 10 countries but if they were to form a custom union it means that all these 10 countries will have common common tariff rules common tariff rules for other countries also which are not the part of these 10 countries okay for example india so they will have a common tariff rules for india all these 10 countries so custom union means it is a free trade agreement plus common tariff rules for non participants in that agreement okay in that custom union agreement along with this plus partially same non tariff barrier for non participating countries so the 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 tariff barriers will be same for non participating countries for all the participants and the non tariff barriers will be partially same okay it can be 50% same 70% same 30% same like that or it can be 100% same also so uh, for non participating uh, countries which are not the member of this agreement custom union agreement for them the tariff barriers will be same for all the countries uh and uh, the non tariff barriers will be partially same so that is a custom union so see again the degree of integration has increased here now let us look at the further degree of integration which is known as common market or single market okay here there is a complete elimination of tariff and non tariff barriers for goods for members okay so see this is for complete elimination of tariff for goods is like fta and you know here non tariff barriers is also completely eliminated okay for member countries which are the part of this agreement members means who are the part of this common market agreement 
along with this there is a free movement of labor and capital also so citizen of uh, one country can go to the citizen of another member country for example if there is a common market established between india india and bangladesh so there will be a free movement of labor and capital so indian citizen can go in bangladesh freely bangladesh citizen can come in india freely so that is that is also another degree of integration added here and then there is a partially same non tariff barriers on goods barriers on services movement of capital and labor with non participants okay so with non participants there is a partially same uh, conditions applied by all the countries who are part of this common market so you have to just keep these things in mind you have to just understand them ki how is the degree of integration increasing then let us come to the next one economic union okay so in economic union all the conditions of common market which is here okay all these conditions are there along with this there is a same tariff rules for trade in goods with non members also okay so along with this there is a same tariff rule for non members uh, also so uh, uh, you know that is another degree of integration that is added so that is known as economic union then the next type is economic and monetary union so it is you know as the name suggest it is a economic union so all the conditions of economic union plus there is a shared monetary policy plus partially shared fiscal policy okay so monetary policy will be shared uh, between the member countries of this economic and monetary union so they will be aligned to each other okay they can be 100% similar also they can have a common currency right they can have a common inflation targeting so there will be a shared monetary policy and you know partially shared fiscal policy also so fiscal policy may also be you know aligned to each other so that is economic and monetary union and then the last degree of integration which comes is the complete economic integration so complete economic integration means eliminating barriers to trade in goods and services and movement of labor and capital so every every barrier is removed along with that there is a same tariff and same non tariff barriers with non members also okay so this is also the same then there is a shared monetary and fiscal policies so monetary and fiscal policies are shared then there is a shared policies for movement of capital and labor between members and non members okay so you know complete economic integration means everything is same for you know the countries who are participants who are the members of this complete economic integration agreement so uh, you know these are this is the highest level of integration uh, when it comes to economic integration so everything is same you know complete elimination of trade trade in goods and services and movement of labor and capital when it comes to trade amongst themselves among the member countries themselves right and same tariff and non tariff barriers for non members along with that fiscal and monetary policies are also shared they are aligned to each other and uh, you know the, there is also shared policies for movement of capital and labor between members and non members so all the economic policies when it comes to international trade and movement of capital they are exactly the same or you know they are shared when it comes to monetary and fiscal policies so uh, this was about it uh, in this particular lesson we have studied about uh, you know how trade agreements are formed what are the different kinds of trade agreements and uh, uh, we will we'll continue uh, you know this economic international economic policy in the next video thank you